This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader who's going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there are no spoilers past the chapter we are covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan of the series, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. In this episode, we're going to be talking about chapters 1 and 2 of The Dragon Reborn. It's kind of like starting a new year. I know. You always mess up the 2020 for like six months. Yeah. And then, yeah. (laughs) The Dragon Reborn. I had to rehearse that one. I was like, oh, chapters one and two. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, you can't mess that one up, Because I normally have to like double check that it's like, you know, 35 or 42 or make sure I got the right (laughs) chapters, but... Yeah. One and two. Got it. Got it. Did it. One take. Nailed it. One take. (laughs) So chapter one, we have Waiting. Chapter two is Sidene. Yeah. And we're reusing chapter titles, I guess. Oh, yeah. Because Sidene was already a chapter title. Yeah. So. Huh. Yeah. So lazy. <laughs> lazy writing. That's what I call it. Yeah. So let's jump into the fun fact. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> for the start of this book, I thought we'd start with some like good old fashioned data on the Dragon Reborn. Cool. What the book is going to look like okay, comparative okay. to other books. Okay, okay, okay yeah cool so we got ahead of us one prologue and 56 chapters but it only comes in at two hundred and forty thousand words so so it's actually in the bottom three for the shortest books in the entire series or top three for the shortest books in top the three series. yeah it's yeah. In the top three for the shortest books it's the third shortest book bottom three for length bottom three for length got it the cool part is it's in a three-way tie for third place for the most number of chapters. Okay. So although it's a really short book, it's got a ton of chapters in it. A ton of chapters, which means more episodes for us. Yeah. Just likely shorter episodes. Yeah. Because we were looking at like the first half of this book and planning out our schedule for what our summer is going to look like and everything. And I noticed how short each chapter is. Yeah. But when we were finishing The Great Hunt, for page counts... Per episode, so per two chapters, was averaging about 27 pages. Yeah. Something like that around there. And this is averaging about 19 pages. So that's awesome for note taking and episodes. Per two chapters. Yeah, it just means likely shorter episodes. Maybe. We'll see. But if we have shorter episodes, that means we can just release more episodes. That's true too. Too, right? Because I don't think we want to start covering three or four chapters in an episode. No, we're going to keep it at two max. Right. So we'll just have to see how things go. Yeah, just, absolutely. Just roll with it. Now, the cool part, last part about my fun fact about oh, right. the number we're of chapters. Oh, right. We're doing your fun fact. Yeah, we're not just talking about like our <laughs> release schedule here. Yeah. <laughs> so the two other shortest books have 20 fewer chapters. Okay. Which yes. are What are the other two shortest books? Chapter book eight and nine, Path of Daggers and Winter's Heart. They've got 32 and 36 chapters. This one has 57. Whoa. Whoa. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's actually significantly different. Yeah. So let's get started. Chapter one and two. Okay, let's do it. So chapter one, waiting. And the entire time I was reading this chapter, I was waiting for the book to start. Ah, I get Uh, it. That's a good joke. Because it was kind of boring. And it's also like Perrin's been waiting forever. Yeah. And it's also like coming off of some really exciting stuff. (laughs) And And now, yeah. And then it's like literally he's sitting on a horse for... 10 pages. Well, it's kind of great because it really puts us in the perspective of like Perrin and the entire camp. Yeah. Like they are literally, they've been waiting for months of just sitting. We've come off of this like crazy whirlwind of an adventure. Yeah. Like Horn of Valir, Sky Battle, Dragon Reborn. And then it's like, And it's like Portal Stones, Waygates, (laughs) you know, all sorts of crap all over the place. And then it's like, let's just sit sit here for months and months and months. I do want to talk about that later on though. So we'll get into it. Okay. So we start with a Ravens picture, the two Ravens. Yeah. Which we actually start out with in uh, early on in the eye of the world yeah yeah we haven't seen the ravens for a long time that's true so we open with your classic wheel of time first paragraph i have to ask did you read it or did you skip over it i read it okay okay i just want to i thought it was different it is different per book yeah they do change like where the wind comes from where it goes yeah and so it's back at the mountains of mist yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) so initially my first thought was like, whoa, we've jumped a lot of time here. Because yeah. from book one to book two, we were about a month. Yeah, yeah. Right? 
but this is like an entire half a year it, it feels is. like well so, we left last book like starting winter yeah and we kind of had that conversation of like oh how long has it been in the journey of the entire book series so far yeah and then we just skip basically to the next springtime yeah we're like just about we're a couple weeks away from spring so we've skipped the entire journey so far in length of yeah time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly okay so we are in parents perspective which i found an interesting way to start off the book yeah yeah and we are in the mountains of mist with shinerians yes so we have Reagan, Massima, and Uno, and then two other unnamed soldiers. Yeah, we kind of know that the whole Shine Arn They're crew all is here. here. And so they are waiting for something on Moraine's orders, and Perrin's feelings towards Aes Sedai have not changed. Yeah, maybe a little bit worse too. I'd say worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe like, they have changed for clearly, the worse. Clearly frustrated. Yes. And so something tickles the back of his mind, and he refuses to acknowledge it. And I went wolves question mark it most likely is yeah. we actually get a confirmation that it definitely is. that it is wolves yeah which yeah. is like he's reverting back to the whole like not embracing the wolves thing yeah he like made a couple steps forward and now he he's did. taking a couple steps back yeah where he's shutting them up completely it's kind of funny because we got a huge time jump here where they've been waiting for months so it kind of puts in perspective of everybody else in the world has also moved a few months forward right kind of like how we skipped Egwene and Nynaeve's training in Tar Valen yeah we're gonna see a probably jump in all those other character arcs too Ooh, that's probably true yeah unless you know it's Robert Jordan unless we go back in and time we go and back we just, in time you know, and catch up and we just get back to where Matt is being healed in Tar Valen or something like that because maybe you know, I kind of am interested in that or maybe it takes months to like walk to Tar Valen I don't know I thought they were gonna use the Waygate. Anyway. You thought they were going to use the Waygate? Yeah, I thought they were going to use the Waygate. And go ways. through the ways to get to Tar Valen? Yeah. Through the scary dark murder ways with yeah. the black wind? Yeah. You thought they were going to do that? Yeah. I don't think they're going to do that. Well, I don't think Matt has <laughs> enough time to, <laughs> He's to walk time. back to Tar Valen from Tom and Head. Well, maybe. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Oh, I just like assumed that that's what they would do. Cause Let's would... read and find out. Okay. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about No, this it doesn't chapter. at all, but... You know, time jumps and all that, so. Sure. Okay. So, we get a recap on how jacked Perrin is and how he shaves. Yep. But I don't know if he shaves anymore. Like, it says it's he used like, to shave. Yeah, because they were making fun of his hair, so I'm guessing yeah. he had, like, the young beard That's coming in. That's how much happens in this chapter is we're talking about Perrin's facial hair. Yeah. So, we also get a lot of description of the trees. Yes. And he has an axe. I don't know if you forgot that. He has an axe and a longbow. Yeah, he has an axe and a longbow. Uh-huh. He has a new horse. Yes, Stepper. Stepper, that's kind of interesting. You remember that for trivia. Yeah, Stepper. Stepper. And? Do we mention they've been waiting? Yeah, they've been waiting. Okay. Okay, okay enough. Because I'm getting bored again. <laughs> so, Perrin spots a woman in the distance with his excellent eyes. But before he can tell the others, Massima says, Raven. And Perrin draws his bow and shoots the bird down. And then we get a recap on ravens being spies for the dark one yes a lot of this is like as a reader we're just getting this background information yeah. <laughs> again and how they are spies and yeah. they have to report back to a fade so it's not like the dark one is looking directly through the raven's eyes probably yes, exactly so. and then we get a bunch of nicknames yep nickety names for the dark one yeah <laughs> that's what they are yeah so heart's bane soul's bane heart fang lord of the grave lord of the twilight father of lies and dark one yes I think a couple of those are new. I, if I've heard those before... You've heard like variations of most of them. Yeah. But like I don't think we've specifically heard Lord of the Twilight before. No, that one's kind of funny. Yeah, or Soulsbane. I don't or think Heart we heard that. Fang. I think we heard Heartfang. I don't or know. Or something like that. We've Similar. heard like, yeah. Heartsbane is like Aeel or something like that. Yes, anyway, yeah. So we got all these different things. They all mean the same thing, essentially. One thing we do, we can take out of this, though, is that the Shy Narns are being, like, deferent towards Perrin. Yeah. And he's kind of got that role now as a leader. They're just kind of, like, going along with whatever he says. Yes. And, like, what Rand says, obviously, but also Perrin's getting that role, too. Yeah. Okay. So, we learn that Uno is now accessorizing. <laughs> yeah. He's gotten himself an eye patch. Yeah. So, that's cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Do you think he drew an eye onto his eye patch? No. I think that a skilled artist did it for him. <laughs> yeah, he probably did it himself. <laughs> okay, so Baron tells the others 
of the woman and then realizes, based on her clothes, that she is one of the traveling people. Which is interesting because we didn't see any of those in book two. Yeah. It's just kind of like a callback to book one. Yeah. And in case you don't remember what traveling people are. No violence. No violence. They don't like violence. That's it. So we also get a note that Perrin has encountered a lot of women already, which seems strange. Yeah. Now, this Considering I, where they are in the world. Well, this is something we can talk about, though, because yeah. like Moraine is clearly sending for women somehow, mm-hmm. and we're not really sure how or why or what they're and being... And they like, don't even really seem yeah, to know Yeah, they don't how, really have much idea, how too. How or why. So... Yeah, and like yeah. all walks of life, it was described there was like a beggar woman and a merchant and a, a lady in fine silks... And now yeah. Tinker, and probably a bunch of other people too, but yeah. Do you have any like ideas of what's going on with that whole? No. No, nothing? Okay. No, we really get yeah. literally zero information. We know Maureen kind of has like a network. Sure. Yeah. But we don't really know how big or vast or what, what's going on. Yeah. Unless, you know how she had given the boys those coins yep. and used them as like a GPS tracker i do remember that maybe she has some sort of now i hate to make you take a shot here (laughs) oh you just rolled your eyes at me okay no 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 no. just go with it okay so in harry potter yeah when dumbledore's army was all gonna they were all gonna get together to do some illegal learning okay in book five they had these coins that would show messages on them Cool. Okay. To when they were supposed to meet and stuff like that. Okay. And so they would just look like normal coins and then they would like change or shift somehow. So some sort of communication device. Some magical gotcha. type of thing. But these women don't even really seem to know. They just knew. Yeah. 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 Almost so like, So here's I don't a question. Know. Maybe because we know that Maureen obviously is pretty tight with uh, Swan and Varen. Yeah. Do you think that Maureen is like communicating somehow with other Aes Sedai and like helping to plan. We, we kind of heard speculation from the White Cloaks that there were Aes Sedai supporting Rand somehow, some way. Yeah. And I know that's not the most reliable information, no. but if there's like Aes Sedai stuff going on behind the scenes. Yeah, I'm not really sure other than the fact that I know Moraine has like influencing powers. Okay, yeah. I just don't know how far she could like go meeny 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 yeah and and like shoot lasers out of her head towards other people yeah so like maybe some sort of form of like the gps coin okay that like yeah something like that (laughs) draws them to her yeah and reports something because we have no idea what they're even reporting we don't know what's what's being said i don't know but let's make this episode a little more interesting sure and get you a shot okay that's fine (laughs) all right so you got me a winnipeg jets shot glass in the big hockey mitt yeah i did do that mostly because number one we really missed the nhl and the nhl playoffs that's true and we are headed on a fun camping road trip adventure that's going to end (laughs) up in winnipeg camping extravaganza (laughs) and then seeing our family yeah in the next little bit because our original east coast trip plans to the east coast of canada those yeah. plans were completely canceled yeah so we got to do something we got to get out of the house which is camping and we're going on a little bit of a canadian prairie road trip <laughs> cheers to that cheers okay so massima calls tinkers useless cowards and then uno says it takes bravery for this woman to ride up to them unarmed yeah which is like a fair point yeah and Perrin is very restless and very impatient because this woman is actually not even riding up to them. Yeah. She's like <laughs> meandering around. She stops, stops to, like, to look, look at, at the, raven. the dead raven. <laughs> and so finally Perrin's like, okay, let's just go to her. Yeah. <laughs> so they go over and Perrin sees that this woman doesn't seem afraid and she doesn't smell afraid. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. He's got his wolfy abilities. Yeah. And, then and he, he can smell emotions. Uh-huh. So. Well, fear, that's a thing that people say animals can sense. Yeah. Like yeah. with horses and stuff. Some like sort of like pheromones or something. They sense when you're scared of them. Okay. Right? I, th- I don't know I, anything really about uh, biology, I just, but. I just thought of that. You sweat more probably when yeah, you're Yeah, I didn't think he afraid. could smell like if you're sad. 
Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I just thought it was like the whole like fear thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's anyway, fair. Because that's animalistic, right? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So she tells them that she is seeking a woman named Moraine. And this is where things really did get interesting. Yeah. Well, first of all, Maureen's using her own name. Yeah. We And we don't really know anything about what that means in any context, but, yeah. you know, she goes by a fake name sometimes. Sometimes. When she doesn't want to be known as an Aes Sedai, but this woman knows she's an Aes Sedai. Knows she's an Aes Sedai. Yeah. So uh, this woman's name is Leia, and Leia is actually a name I wouldn't mind. As a baby name. Okay. Except for like Luke and Leia. No, that's why I like it. Oh yeah, no, I'm videoing that pretty Yeah, fast. but it's not spelled the same. Okay, that's L-E-Y-A. That, no, I know. I, I, I get that. Leia. I like it. So Le- <laughs> I did some research. So Leia. Is it Star Wars or is it Wheel of Time? I don't even know. Exactly. But it's an Indian name meaning lion. Okay. Or a Spanish name meaning loyalty. Nice. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not, not bad. I'm not against it. It's not terrible. Although she's a tinker. Yeah. I don't know. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> but no. It's... Sorry to everyone who likes tinkers. I, I disagree with the tinkers philosophy. No, I so. like I like the name. Okay. That's all. You've told me to tell you when I like names. Yeah, but this is like a C-list character here. So that's kind of the point. That's okay. <laughs> I don't even know if I could say it's C-list. It's like... It's like literally no one. Yeah. But it does what? Well, maybe. Maybe she's going to end up being like... Plus, did you not hear the fate that she's got in store for her? Why would you put that evil on her, you know, future child? child? Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that. It has nothing to do with that. I just <laughs> liked the name. It stood out to me. Okay. Back to this. Yeah. <laughs> so Perrin says they will take her to Maureen, but wants to know how she found them. And her answer is the same as all the other women... I knew that if I came this way, someone would find me and take me to her. I just knew. Yeah. I have news for her. Okay. So I don't know if she's being cryptic, like she was told not to tell anybody. That's very possible. Or if she actually... Has no idea. Has no idea. Yeah. Because she says, I'm looking for un... And then dot, dot, dot. A woman. Like yeah. she was going to say an Aes Sedai. So that's but not But then like... she already is censoring herself for what she's saying. So it really could be just like as simple as Maureen has somehow sent letters out to these women saying, come with news to yeah. this location. Someone will find you. Yeah. And don't say who I am yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which seems a little more likely than yeah. like... Yeah, it's like not that advanced techno. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coin messaging system. <laughs> right. <laughs> magical coin messaging yeah, system it's like a pager <laughs> yeah <laughs> so on their journey back Perrin tells her that he's surprised to see a traveling person here and she says that it's possible to oppose evil without doing violence yeah and that's like the whole way of the leaf stuff. yeah 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 and so Perrin doesn't care for it and he says Trollocs will just kill you. Yeah, like, good luck with that philosophy. Yeah. You're going to get murdered. <laughs> so, I mean, this discussion, we've had it a couple times before. We had it when we got introduced to the Tinkers. But we've seen Perrin have these arguments when he first met the Tinkers, too. Yeah. He is very, very, very opposed to the philosophy of do no violence. Right. But it's not like he's running around causing violence, Yeah. you know, for nothing. He's just very in self-defense is necessary preserving my life is necessary yeah and it's worth fighting for and killing for yeah so like i i agree with perrin 100 percent on this in the sense that the philosophy of do no violence you know i personally think that's good you should try not to hurt people ever yeah. but i don't believe in the absolute philosophy of never ever ever under any circumstances do violence yeah just doesn't make sense no so she looks at perrin and says but you are not happy with your weapons. So he thinks, how does she know that? (laughs) You look grumpy. Yeah, and he says, I must live the best I can in the world the way it is. Yeah. Which is fair, I think. Yeah, absolutely. But she says, you're so sad for one so young. And then she goes, why so sad? (laughs) And then she's going to go, let's put a smile on that face. No, okay. No? Yeah, no, probably not. Probably not. Yeah. That's the saying, right? That's I what think the Joker so. says? I think so. Why so sad or something? Doesn't he? Why so serious? Why so serious? <laughs> oh, I'm so bad at literally everything. You could have fact-checked that too yourself. I didn't at all. I no. just... Nope. 
Yeah, you assumed. You, you took a shot. It's close enough. I appreciate that. It's close enough. Yeah, it is close enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perrin's also serious. Oh, yeah, he is. Sad and serious. He's way too serious and sad. Yeah. So they pass some mountain with like two people carved on the side. Yeah, it's world building. Yeah. Because Maureen, Maureen doesn't, doesn't know. even know who they yeah, are. Yeah, it's just literally world building. So. Yeah, I wonder how close they are actually like to the two rivers. And it's like a man and a woman. And I wonder if it's like the ancient king and queen so, of Manetherin. Likely they're on the other side of the mountains of mist. Okay. Because they so came from the Falma not. direction. Probably not. Okay. It looks like they're on the other side. Okay. So he leads her and the others back to their camp. And he hears a blue finch call, which basically means that Shinerians are in trees watching from spy nests. Yes. Spy nest. Yeah. And so they are all camped out in this like bowl valley between two mountains. Yeah. And it's very well hidden, very well defended. It's a cute little camp with like log huts built everywhere. Like they've been there they all winter. They have hunkered down for they've, like months. They've built log cabins. They're huts. They're more like huts. Uh-huh, sure. Yeah. So, also, the dragon banner is just, like, hung on a pole. So, that's good. Yeah. So, I guess Rand is here, because that was going to be my question, is where's okay. Rand? Yeah. Is he with them? Is he not? What's going on? Yeah. But if his banner is here... He probably is, He's too. probably there. So, someone calls out to them, and it's a young woman with short hair, wearing a boy's coat and breeches... And I went, yes, Min is back in her pants. Excellent. Good. Out of those dresses. Yeah. Loyal's here too, we get. And Perrin looks at the woman and says, welcome to the camp of the dragon reborn. Very cool. So basically everyone who left Falma is stay at this. Stay together. Yeah, stay together. Yeah. So it's a very small camp. They've hunkered down. They're waiting and they're waiting for something. And this is what I want to talk about though. Okay. Because the entire premise of the whole like waiting for something to happen we got the reference that Perrin could like feel something, but it's kind of like the whole portal stone situation because if Rand and crew had have been able to go through the ways and immediately catch up with Pat and Fane, things wouldn't have lined up properly. Yeah. So the ways couldn't work. So they went through the portal stones and even that, if they had gotten through immediately, things wouldn't have lined up properly. But because the pattern forced him to like kind of get trapped for months it allowed everything else to catch up to speed. It allowed Egwene and Nynaeve and Min to like get there and Elaine to get to Falma for things to happen. It allowed the White Cloaks to do their business, to like catch up and then... So that everyone was there at the same time. At the same time, at the right yeah. place, the right time. So it all lined up so things could happen They were the way they were supposed to be. And here is kind of like, it sounds like the same thing and we really get into it in the next Except chapter. Except this is sort of like a hurry up and wait situation exactly yeah. like moraine is clearly waiting for something waiting for the wheel to you know tell Rand, Rand when what to, to do, do what to do and, and we're gonna get into that this yeah. chapter but but that's kind of like the big question is like is there some big epic event that they have to hunker down for like four to six months or whatever it really is for something to happen yeah so that's kind of the big question of why they're doing this okay so we get into chapter two which is called sidine yeah and we get the picture of the dragon's fang. And I also have a question for you about whether or not we have a better name for that yet. Like, we get that it's the male half of the symbol, and now it's more associated with Rand. It's literally Sidene. Oh, it's just Sidene. Uh, we yeah. can call it Sidene symbol? Yeah, we can. Rather than dragon's so fang? So, we've heard that the women's half is the flame of Tarvalin. Yeah. And that's Sidar. Yeah. And then this half is the dragon's fang or Sidene. Okay. So... You can call it Sidene or Sidar when it comes up Because I just think the dragon's fang is just so negative. It is. At this point. But so is Sidene. No. Sort of. Yeah. Well, yeah, after this okay. chapter. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of not the best But thing. I mean, like, the dragon's fang is associated with, like, being a dark friend and, yeah, yeah. like, the dark one. Do you want to just call it, what do you want to call it then? Sidene? Yeah, Sidene symbol. Sidene symbol? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. So our we're gonna, just we're gonna forget that. I'm not. Okay. I'm gonna remember forever. <laughs> so I I never forget anything. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm so good at remembering. So <laughs> so the scene. <laughs> like how to pronounce Egglemar? <laughs> That's different. Or Gleb? That's different. Algolmar. You say Algolmar. Egglemar. It's Egglemar. It is Egglemar. Oh, yeah, it is. That's what it is. You say Algolmar Al or something I like that. I say Algolmar. So our scene continues from Perrin's point of view, and the woman named Leia 
wants to talk to Maureen before doing anything else, just like all the women before her. Yeah. And so Perrin shows her which hut is Maureen's and she heads right over. And then we get that everyone is going a little stir crazy Yeah. Here. I think Robert Jordan does a good job of like describing the tediousness of everything. Yeah. Like even Perrin's report, like, yeah, we saw Raven. No, it didn't get away. We shot it down. Yeah. Like, like this is literally the 800th time he's yeah said, and he's it's like driving this. him crazy yeah and they ask Perrin also if he knows when they're leaving but no he doesn't know and then we get that Maureen has really kept them there all winter it's not like they've been all over the place and now this is where they've settled for like yeah a month no. or like even like going in doing some like secret spy mission type stuff and to recruit coming people back and, yeah it's and like literally like base nothing no they just sit here yeah this is literally where they sit so min is watching leia and parent asks her what she sees and then we get a recap on Min's vision's ability. On how it works. On how it works. And she tells Perrin that that woman's going to die. No, no. She sees her own bloody face floating above her shoulder. Good. So that's bad. It's bad. But we don't know when or how or, you know, right. we know that she will, but no- nothing else. Yeah. And Perrin says it's a long way back to her camp and hopes that it doesn't mean an attack on where they are. Yeah. Because the whole, like, if she dies from violence doesn't mean right. they're going to get attacked like right now or is it going to be never is it when she leaves like who knows yeah and min picks up on how much perrin seems to care about the tinkers yeah he does maybe that just has to do with his connection to when he stayed with them for a little bit it could i don't know I'm also kind of thinking like he's Perrin, worried for them. Like he knows they're gonna die and they're not gonna fight back. Yeah, so Perrin he, he is like a genuine. He wants them. to protect people. He wants to help people who can't or won't help themselves. Yeah, like that is kind of his character. So yeah, she just thinks it's strange that he clearly cares about them because she says that they're always so peaceful and she always sees violence around blank. Yeah. Like implying that she always sees violence around Perrin. Yeah. So like, why is he caring so much about them when they're so opposite? But yeah. Or it could mean them. Who knows? Yeah. But Loyal comes up to join them. And then we get a recap about what an ogre. Nope. (laughs) Nope. You didn't even do French ogre. Uh, Ogier. Yeah. Ogier. Ogier. (laughs) So then Loyal comes up to join them. And then we get this whole recap about what an ogier is. So great. Yeah. Min gives a synopsis of how she came to be here. She's all caught up in the pattern and Loyal says to Viren and the pattern weaves and stuff. And Min's forced into a relationship with a Rand, sort of. Sort of. She wants to choose who she loves and then blushes. Yeah. But that's funny. So Loyal says that he's been taking notes of their journey and he's going to write a book about these Taviran. Yeah. Hey, how about that? Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? What? I have no idea. Oh, Bill Oh, Bill Bob- Or like Frodo. Finishing no. the book too. Yeah, Bill Baggins there and back again. There you go. That one I looked up. Nice. Okay. I looked that one up because <laughs> I want it because I was like, oh, I know this one. Yeah. So it yeah. reminds me of like writing about your journey. Exactly. One question I do have for you. We know we've advanced a couple months in the storyline. We know that Min was last seen cuddling up next to Rand. Uh-huh. Do you think Min and Rand's relationship has advanced at all? Or lots, or maybe a little bit, or any. Where do you think that is? Because Ooh, she's just like, oh, that's... being forced into a relationship and she blushes. Yeah, well, she says, I want to choose who I love. Yeah. Which is... Hey, I'm not talking about love here. I'm just talking about like maybe... No, no, no. I know you're not. But you're asking a question of me about the relationship. Yeah. And she just said the word love. That's true. So maybe that implies that there has been a furthering of their relationship like maybe they talk more yeah more so than him being like min what are you doing here right yeah where's a gwayne where's a gwayne yeah (laughs) and then she's like her rump yeah but i don't think anything romantic on his end has gone anywhere i think that's obvious (laughs) okay because like he seems the worst he seems pretty wrapped up in his own shit right now he does he does and so i really want to say pretty much nothing okay maybe closer friendship wise maybe okay yeah like there's maybe some they, advancement like there's been it's been months and yeah in the same camp so it's likely they've like hung out more but not romantic style probably not so there's a stir around the men in camp 
And so they all look up and they see Rand coming out of Moraine's hut in his fancy red coat. Yeah. So that one's back on. Yep. Uno calls out, Lord Dragon, we stand ready. Honor to serve. Yeah. And Maxima has like devotion in his eyes and... Like Rand looking lovingly. Just storms away into some trees. Well, imagine months of Rand going through like, this. Like every months. time he comes out, they like stand up and they're like, Lord Dragon. Yeah, he even... Yeah built his house his little hut away <laughs> from everyone else because he can't stand people he can't handle it yeah and min says that he has been arguing with moraine all day this time so implying that he argues with moraine often <laughs> possibly every day yeah for you know maybe less time but yeah yeah and so perrin says he better go talk to him after they argue ran needs someone to talk with so this happens often yeah now, Perrin follows Rand to his moppy place. Yep. <laughs> Does but, he mean moppy place? But he means his moppy place. It's the street lamp yeah. he thinks was in Casablanca. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Yeah. That's like a double <laughs> reference there. <laughs> but it is his moppy place. Oh, it is. 100%. It's where he goes after he has <laughs> arguments with Maureen. So it's like a cave in the side of a mountain thing. Yeah, well, it's not a necessarily... It's like a little slit in the mountain that opens up into another valley. Yeah. So... Cool. Yeah. Okay. Mountains. Am yeah, I right? Yeah, you know, I'm not good at the geography <laughs> of mountains, but like... There's trees and stuff where they go. Yeah. So Perrin finds Rand staring at the palms of his hands, and Perrin knows about his, like, branded herons. And in case you forgot... Rand recites the prophecy for you. Yes. So the whole twice and twice shall he be marked business. But he does say something very important immediately afterwards. He like laughs and goes, but no dragons yet. Well, it's a good point though, because yeah. the first part is like one heron, which is on his one hand, and then twice heron on his second hand. Uh -huh. And then the next line is once the dragon, twice the dragon. Yeah. So as he checked the bottoms of his feet. Ooh. Okay. Now we're getting on to something yeah. here. <laughs> no, but seriously, like, do you think that this implies like there's going to be literally branding brandings of dragons somewhere, or is it like, you know, probably we, we have a dragon on his flag already? Well, both of these have happened with Baalzamon encounters. They have. So maybe. Maybe next time Baalzamon wraps him up in his dragon flag and then like burns him somehow. Yeah, probably. Okay. Just wondering. Yeah. Like, any idea? You can't just steal that idea. Yeah, it's a good one. No. <laughs> and just spitball an idea. Well, I too. said, yeah, I probably not the soles of his feet. Okay. Uh, but maybe. Okay. Something. It, it makes sense. What else does he have two of? <laughs> Butt cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Ass tattoos. <laughs> I'm gonna get a dragon tattooed on my butt. The lower back. Yeah, but I don't know. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah. And it doesn't because necessarily mean that they have to be like brands. They could be no, like he's, flags or something. That's too. right. Because he does have the one banner. Yeah, yeah. Would that count? Well, because originally Tom too, when he was talking about herons, he was like counting herons. Like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. So. But Ren knew. Yeah, he Ren like, knew at that point he, he had like one. He like clenched his hand so that he was like, <laughs> I don't have any. Too many. <laughs> the I horn know. of Valir is not in this chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Okay. It might it might make sense that it might be the banner. So you're going to get another banner? No, I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, but tuck it away. Yeah. We'll come back to it later. Okay, so Ran looks at Perrin and asks if he thinks Matt is all right. That's nice. Which is good that he's like thinking about other people. That is because true. Because he seems pretty self-involved right now. Very self-involved, but he is but thinking about To be fair, Matt. he's going through a lot. Yeah, he does. But, well, we gotta talk about it when we get there. Yeah, but he says that Matt looked so sick before they left, and Perrin says he must be healed by now. Yeah. Especially considering it's been months and months. Yeah. And that's interesting that this seems to be the first time they're talking about it. Well, it's, it probably isn't, but that's yeah. also the same thing about the whole... It's just a recap in the story. Yeah, it's like a recap us. for us. Okay, okay, yeah. So... Perrin says, I find myself wishing I was still just a blacksmith. Except, hold on, I have to say it like Eeyore. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself wishing I was still just a blacksmith. That's a pretty good Eeyore. <laughs> yeah. And then he asks Rand if he wishes he was still a shepherd. Yeah. But then Rand says, Goes the, off on a feed The rant. duty is heavier than a mountain, and the dark one is stirring. Which is interesting, so... 
he doesn't believe anymore that he's killed the Dark One. Yes, I did want to point that out. It seems like he's gotten past that. Yeah. For however short amount of time you thought that. Yes. That's done. Yeah. And that's probably from Maureen. Like, yeah. Like, pushing him for months on this topic. Well, also, probably more Beelzebub dreams. That's true. We do get a little dream reference. Dream reference. Okay, we can talk about that for sure. Yeah. But... Because that's when he sort of realized that Baelzaman was back the yeah. first time was when Baelzaman started showing, showing up, up again. again. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot. But he does talk about how there's only him. Yeah. He's very like singular in this whole speech. He's like speech. the Dragon Reborn has to face the Dark One in the last battle. Nobody else can do and it. And that's it's gotta me. Be me. It's got to be me. So and accepting that he's the Dragon Reborn. It seems like he's getting there. But he's also kind of crazy and like laughing mirthlessly. And yeah. Yeah. Well, what happens to men who channel a lot of the one power all the Go time? Go crazy. So maybe this is like a hint of the start of it. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. It made you think about it, though. Yes, you certainly... Because you got to start watching for this. You certainly did. I already started watching for it. I know, but you got to like because extra Because he would up. have like weird... He had like reaction of... weirdo stuff, but this is yeah. like... He's in a dark place. Yes. Thinking some bad thoughts. In his moppy place. Yeah. So we get that Rand is arguing with Moraine about wanting to go and help the people who have declared for the Dragon Reborn. They're out there fighting and dying because he raised the banner and Rand sits here safe in the mountains and he feels like he owes them something. Yeah. Now, Moraine's got a point. You can't just go and try and scoop up some of the rabble. And even he admits Moraine is right. Like if he joins one of the groups, like They're the way close will be on yeah. them. They're like waiting for Rand to like show himself. In and then the we also sky. know. Well, this is another thing to consider. We got from Jacob Carradine that he's in a very tight spot where Ooh. he has orders to make sure Rand dies. Right. But then he also, he also has, has orders, orders where to make Rand sure Rand die. doesn't die. And Rand so far has not died. No. Which means that Jacob Carradine's family is currently paying a price. Ah. Uh, yeah. Like maybe, we're, maybe he shouldn't have got all caught up with dark friends. Oh yeah, no, I'm just it's saying. Like, <laughs> this is the thing we don't exactly know how many months has been since that meeting, but yeah, that was in the winter, and we also get mention that outside of the mountains, spring is sort of starting yeah, to be spring. We're like getting there, and we also know that Pedro Nile wants to go on a little walk over to the two, two rivers, rivers in when, the, the when the snow melts. So yeah, so, okay. So two rivers better watch out. Yeah. That's why I was wondering like, how close they actually were. Yeah. They're not close really. Like they're kind of close. Yeah. But they're really not they're close. They're close enough to have Perrin thinking about how it's bad luck to be in the mountains of mist. Yeah. The issue about traveling through mountains though is that they're mountains. Yeah. So. So Rand is super frustrated. Moraine says he can't do anything. But Moraine also says he will know what to do next because the pattern will pull him. But she never says how he'll know and he's just ranting yeah so if you like and that's the whole point is like he's ranting ah nice uh, i like that okay okay but maureen's point is do nothing and then wait for something to happen yeah like it kind of seems like a weird plan oh, but it's also you'll like, know you'll know <laughs> old prospect <prospective>. yeah <laughs> Yeah, Maureen's like sitting around waiting for something to happen, but we're not sure what. Yeah. But Rand's going to know when it happens. I don't even think Maureen knows what. She's like no. sitting there watching Rand going like, you feel it yet? And it's like, what's the news that she's waiting for from these women? Right. Probably she just wants to like know what's going on outside. I think so. That would make sense. I think sense. that's probably what makes the most sense. Like stay informed. And I find it interesting that Rand is like, how am I supposed to know? Where the last big thing that happened, he felt this pull... Like, he felt it inside that he needed to go do something. Yeah. He needed to go back. He needed to go places. So it's kind of like he's definitely not feeling that because yeah. he doesn't have that. Yes. So. But the fact that he's not even connecting, that he's had that feeling before. Yeah, but Rand's like the worst at connecting things. Rand is the worst at a lot of things. We have like mountains of evidence where he's bad at connecting Terrible dots. at everything. So... <laughs> Wait a second. Yeah. You're telling me that Thane is a bad guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. So Rand knows that he's going to have to fight Baalzaman. Like, that's the enemy. But then he says, what if I can't? And the ground trembles. And Rand shivers and holds his eyes shut and says, oh, light, it pulls at me so. Yeah. I can't even do it. Like, so I can't even Sidene. say this without it sounding so stupid. He's in a bad, he's in a bad place. Maybe... 
I have to picture it in like that accent <laughs> because like it just sounds so stupid. But the ground now. Yeah, so he's doing something. Heaves beneath Perrin's feet and the whole ground jerks and heaves and pebbles and rocks all fly around and trees flail and crack into and, and then it Perrin's all Perrin's worried stops. about like the mountains falling down on them. Yeah. So it's like, but this is crazy. Like Rand is unable to control himself grasping at Sidene right now. Yeah. And he's not controlling what he does with it to a large extent. No, because he like opens his eyes once it's all over and he's like surprised at what's happened. Yeah. Because after it's all done, he's like, oh shit. Yeah. And he's like, I, I had to put it somewhere because it was going to destroy me. Well, it reminds so. me of when Moraine was literally doing the exact same thing except on purpose. Yeah. Where all of them were like losing their balance and the horses were like, oh my God. But Moraine was like standing still. And she was doing it intentionally. Yeah. And Rand here is like losing it. Well, so. I find it interesting that there's not even an attempt to teach him. Because I know she has said like, I can't teach you. But yeah, she's like very adamant she can't. pretty similar. Yeah. Like, it sounds so similar to me. So, he here's the thing. Maybe in effect, yeah. it's similar. Like, what you do, well, but not even, how. Well, no. Even yeah. the the flame in the void yeah. sounds just like the whole flower bud True. opening thing. Yeah. Like, she could at least try. Maybe like, she has. Maybe we just haven't seen it. I think that we would see it. Like, we saw Egwene and Nynaeve have a million tiny little boring yep. sessions. Okay. You think we wouldn't see Rand and Moraine attempting to I'm have I'm just a... saying, maybe we just haven't seen it yet. Uh, no. Nope. Okay. No, no. Nope. Don't buy it. Maybe Moraine's just a terrible teacher. That's also completely possible. Yeah. No one said... She didn't sign up to be a teacher. She did not. No. From what we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Rand looks at Perrin and says that it's always there calling to him. Sidene. And sometimes he can't stop himself from reaching it. He can feel the taint and sometimes he reaches out and it's like trying to catch air. What if the last battle comes and he reaches out and catches nothing? Well, you should probably practice more before the last battle. Well, Perrin says you caught something that time. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, that's a legitimate concern that yeah. Rand can have. But it's also, you know, you're still new at this. I wonder how many times Rand and Perrin have had this exact same conversation. Probably a lot. Yeah, because Perrin was like, I better go talk to him. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely probably has happened many times before. Yeah. And then Rand says he didn't mean to do all this. And Perrin is concerned that Rand literally has no idea what he's doing. Yeah. Again, legitimate because concern. it's concerning. Yeah. And so Rand says he wants to be alone for a while and Perrin turns to leave. But then Rand says, hey, Perrin, do you have dreams when you sleep? Good dreams? Yeah. What does that mean? Okay. And Perrin goes, uh, sometimes, but I don't remember much of what I dream. He has learned to set guards against his dreams. Now, this is interesting because yeah. we know that he's got his whole wolf connection, yeah. which has seemed to lend some semblance of protection. Yeah. So it's like, is that Although what he's talking about? Although Baelzaman did set a wolf on fire. He did. Which in turn set a real wolf on fire. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. Yeah. So, or is it more like he's just being cautious or is Moraine doing something? Because Moraine has specifically told the boys that she can like help with dreams. That is true. And this whole, how are your dreams, Perrin? Yeah. Is very reminiscent of how are your dreams, Randall Thor. Very, very close. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so that could mean one of two things with Perrin. But then for Rand... He says his dreams are always there and maybe they tell him things, true things. Yeah. And it's like, what are the scary murder voices in your head telling you to do, Rand? Yeah. Yeah. What are they telling you to light on fire? Huh. Shoot. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this is a big question. What is going on with Rand with his dreams? Yeah. He's having them. They don't seem to be good dreams necessarily. No. Like... <laughs> No. Is it Baalzaman coming and talk to him? Is I he think like, that's part of it. Okay. Is he having like secret Be discussions with Baalzaman in his dreams that are getting like more friendly than... I doubt that. Okay. I really doubt that because he's like, I gotta beat the dark one. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But Perrin at the end of the chapter just goes, okay, crazy. I'm going to go eat now. Yeah, and see just, you later. And just like takes off and they don't talk about it. So I don't know. 
That's it. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I think that it's probably Baalzaman related, considering he's accepting now yeah. that Baalzaman and the Dark One are not dead. Well, the weird thing that he says is the true things part. Because mm-hmm. we have a uh, reference from Egwene that her I was, dreams actually, are true. I was like, going to say, that's my the point I was going to make, is I thought about the whole dreamer okay. business. So do you think there's any like Egwene Rand connection going on? Because there if Egwene's be. back at the tower and like resuming Because they studies, did sort of establish that connection last book. They did with Egwene watching Rand. Right. Like disappear into the portal stones. That, and then also the part where... They saw each other but didn't see each other. Yes. Thing. Yeah, right? which you thought was something to do with like dreams, some yeah. kind of way. Some sort of connection. Okay, so maybe it's like there's a similarity between what Egwene does and what Rand is seeing happen, or if it's like Egwene. Maybe. Egwene. I don't even know if it has to do specifically with Egw- Egwene. Yeah. But I okay. do think that it's a similar ability okay that she has, but it also might extend further for him than just Egwene. Yeah, okay, cool. But no, I think that that's a good start to the book. Yeah, they really set the scene for what was happening. And it's like, we're really thankful that we didn't watch four months of them being stuck in the mountain. We got like two chapters of they have been stuck in the mountains. And it seems like we're going to like get out of there soon. I sure hope so. Sure hope so. Because we got stuff to see. We got things to do, right? It's springtime. Yep. All right. I think we can wrap it up there. Yeah. And we can say that this is officially part of the pattern now. It's part of the pattern. Thank you for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Vince Lewick, Dustin Schluter, Derek Benton, Benjamin, Joe Lott, Kyle Smith, Passion Socks, Moltude, and Mozyme. Music by Audionautics.com. If you'd like bonus content, like bonus episodes, outtakes, Q&As, more fun Wheel of Time talk, early access, cool stickers and keychains, and also to support us making great content, visit us at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We love interacting with our listeners. Plus, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. We'd really love for you to come over and join our Discord channel for some spoiler or spoiler-free discussions. You can find the links at our Twitter page as well as on our Patreon page. Thanks again for tuning in because this really is part of the pattern now.